Welcome, um, my name is Professor Goldsman and thank you for joining me today's tutorial. Hey guys, w welcome. What we're going to do today is it's a tutorial on modular farms. Now the modular farms is basically a series of farms linked up to the one circuit which should ultimately save on redstone and other materials. So, and it, The main problem we have is on servers that have quite a few people, they run the servers at a lower tick speed so what we've done is try to resolve that issue. Now this is what everything runs off, which is a pulse hopper clock. So you've got a hopper clock running into these, which then creates a double pulse. Now I've added a unit which will turn the hopper clock off and also do the breeding. And then we've got a series of chambers with the adults and the babies. And as you can see in a second, we should see the pulse clock kick into action and then uh, you can there you go so the lava goes on they get cooked they die there we are dropping all their resources into the hopper giving us cooked mutton and cooked food also the mushroom cows 21 steak and lots of liver and he picks some pork no rabbits but they will be killed on the next cycle. Now I've included the rabbits and the pigs, but there is a slight difference between the rabbit pigs and everyone else's chamber, due to the fact that pigs and rabbits can fit under a half block high when they're babies. There we are. To breed them, all we do, come over to the breeder unit, which it basically disengages the lava flow. We come at the top, which is now they're ready for breeding. And you just breed them out their little holes. And what happens is they fall down into the little containment area where they will grow up and become food. Look at that, all that cooked steak. Now with the rabbits, you have to go one block extra higher due to the fact the baby rabbits can jump out by jumping on their parents by the looks things. There we are. So once they're all bred. They fall down into the water and the water carries them. So obviously you have breed limits on a lot of servers. So this area here, you put the required amount you want. They flow down into here and then they will die. And then these will stay safe at the top. So without further ado, we will start looking at how to build the items going into this. There will be a world download in the description of this world, uh, so you can get better examples. And I've placed along here some items of what varies in the chambers to make it easier for understanding. So, and it gives you a description of rabbits, pigs, and then also some notes. Now without delay, what we're going to do is just start building the pulse clock build. This example, I am going to build a horizontal instead of the vertical we got over there. So you can get a better judgment when you're looking at it in the world. So what we need to do is start off putting our hoppers down. Like so. Make sure the hoppers go into each other. Like so. So basically all the items are just going to go around in a giant circle. And we have comparators coming off these. Oh, I need a block. In this case, we will choose iron. Like so. Iron block there, iron block here. Then over this side, we put some redstone dust. Redstone dust. Leading into our sticky pistons. Which will then have a redstone block. Then depending on which side you want your terminal to be on, I'm just going to do it there. So that is the hopper clock. All we need left to do with that is just to put some items and then the hopper clock will get underway. Now coming off here, we will place our repeaters. So we have our line of redstone coming off of there into a series of repeaters. So, now you want the one side to be on a longer delay, because then this will go straight to the items, and this one will follow afterwards. 
And that is basically it. So if we put some items in here. Pop turns off. There you go. Slightly too fast there. Put those in. There we go. And you see how the one chain was taking longer. Which sends the second pulse. Which then goes into the killer chamber. So that is the simplest pulse clock you can do. Not to not with the pulse clock. What I would do is bury it under the ground. Because this is going to come in handy for other things. There's a modular tower which I've been doing. Which allows you to grow pumpkins, melons, cactus and sugar cane. And it all runs off this one clock. And you can put it in a tower formation and it's modular so you can do step by step. Which is coming up in a later tutorial. But next what we need to do is the mono stable T flip flop switch over there which is the breed unit which disengages this from killing the animals from going into the chamber so we will get on with that okay now it's time to build the breed switch which activates uh, the water to raise the cattle to give you a greater chance of uh, hitting their hitbox with the food which gives you more cattle from resulting from that breeding it also disengages the lower pulse so the cattle does not get burnt. So all we're going to do is, it's quite easy, it's just a T flip flop. There's a button on there. Leading into a repeater. Now the repeater then leads into a sticky piston, like so. Which is, when the button happens, that's going to give a pulse. That'll go up straight away, cutting off your output straight away. Like so, we'll do that. And then we have a sticky piston here. And this is the block you have your connection running through. Off the side here, we place another repeater. Place that on three ticks. This is going out to your water dispensers for the breeding. And when we engage this, it removes the block. Now, depending on how you connect this up, you might want to resolve this. So, like... If um, you want to breed them, make sure it disengages the circuit. So you might need to break the block, replace the block, depending on how it goes. So let's start building the cooker. I'm only going to build the one cooker, which is going to be the cow, sheep, and mushroom cow cooker. But as I go along, I'll explain the two differences. It, it is very simple. It's not complicated, so you should be able to pick it up from what I've done here. So what we need to do is place our chest down. Place a few box so it is five wide. No, yes, five wide by six long, which is basically where your line of redstone is going to go to connect it to the clocks. We need to put a hopper into the back, like so. Make sure it's connected. Brilliant. Now, two blocks up, dispenser. Now, this is where the first major difference is between the two. Now, if you're breeding rabbits or pigs, you need to put a half slab here, which increases the height. The babies don't get burnt by the lava, but when they're adults, they then do. If you don't, um, the babies will grow up and the pigs will grow up, but they will never be killed by the lava. So, now all you need to do for cows, I always put a sign here just to be on the safe side. But the lava should never be flowing long enough to actually flow down into the bottom half. And then let's just build this facade up a little bit. Glass. Glass. Now what you do need to do, uh, I, I keep doing it is, because I find the game mechanics quite funny in this respect, is use solid blocks everywhere else as possible. Because if you fail to do so, sometimes you'll find your items get placed in the mysterious places. Uh, like so. We need to put so we go too high at the front here, like so. Now, this one here is going to be our breeder. So we put that there with a dispenser on top, like that. And then what we need to do is we'll finish this area off, like so. Oh. So three by three area around the breeder breeding area there we are we need to place a sign here now the sign stops the water flowing 
And we'll put some glass here and here. Now you don't necessarily have to put a sign here, or you do actually, sorry, my bad. You do put a sign there. And then what we put in the corner here is some water. And as you can see, it flows through and carries the animals down. Now we're on to the breed chamber. What we'll do is we'll do the first ring around. So now we should be level with the items there. Put some glass in, which I've now going to replace with a bucket. There, like so. Now, what you need to do is, if it's going to be pigs and rabbits, you need to put slabs around like so. Now, the reason, again, is baby rabbits and baby pigs will fit into a half block, whereas cows, sheep, and mushroom cows will fit into a floor block. So that's all you have to do to transport them like so. Now, to stop the water flowing out from the breeder, you need to put signs here, here, and here. And that will stop them flowing out just like so. You can put blocks here and here then afterwards, because it will push them down. There we are. We'll put some water in here. And there we are. So that is ready for the breeding. And all we then need to do is just increase the height again by one. So we fill all that area in. Like so. So that is there where you would breed your cattle. Now, if you're going for the rabbits, again, you need to put a ring round like this. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is the babies will somehow jump out the top. As you can see over there, I've done it over there. Don't put half slabs on top, because if you put half slabs on top, for some reason it hinders the breeding process. The baby pigs and all the other babies will stay in the breeding chamber and won't drop down in the water. So make sure you keep this area clear. You can put torches, etc. up here. So all we got left to do now is hook up the clocks. So, and that, if I remember rightly, should be where our breed chamber is with a redstone torch. So that is going to be our breed line. And that is like so. I would cut the blocks out so you can run your line under there without hindering the lava line. So that should be your areas. Then you put a repeater there, a repeater there, and then some redstone. to go out like that. There we go. So that is your breed line. I would run that out an extra block. Like so. And then that is your lava line. I would put a repeater at the end of each one. Because then what you can do is hook multiple ones of these up against each other and not have to worry about running the maximum line of redstone because obviously redstone runs about 12 or 14 blocks with a pulse so this way you just connect as many of these up as you can next to each other so that should in theory be everything don't forget to put the lava in which I have right there we go that completes the cooker all we do need to do now is just quickly check the lava lava turns on and the water turns on as well. So that is uh, completed. Thank you for watching. You have been amazing. And I hope everything goes alright for you. If you do like, please leave a like. Other than that, we will see you in the next tutorial. And don't forget to check out me on A Whole New World. Thank you for watching. And good night.